Africa is the solution to Africa's problems and the future. And in that spirit, the International University of East Africa has organized a two-day event they have called International Youth Festival from October 4th to the 5th, where, among other things, we'll look at areas on how to help young people develop and empower themselves. And to appreciate this, we have Professor Emeka Akezua, the Vice Chancellor of the International University of East Africa. Professor, I hope I didn't butcher your name. You did not. <laughs> you got it perfectly right. <laughs> All right. And thank you for talking to us today. Thank you for inviting me to talk with you. All right. So, Professor, why do you think this festival is important to the young people? Uh, the festival is very important to the young people. That is the first international youth festival, which, as you currently pointed out, is being held at the International University of East Africa. It's a very important festival because we believe that young people, the youth who are the majority in the country and also on the continent, need to be able to find themselves, need to be able to have the critical tools needed for them to be part of the solution here in Africa, rather than you know, the youth thinking that the solution lies outside or solely with the government. You know, the youth need that um, hope and a path to knowing that they can create businesses, they can do other things to help to develop solutions for the issues that are present here in Africa. I want to focus on the part of education. Mm -hmm. What are some of the activities or information that the young people are going to per se learn from the festival that is going to help them develop themselves and empower themselves in a strong way, as you st stated that Africa has to help its own self. At the festival, we are encouraging the youth to do the presentations on education. So there's a bigger uh, picture to it. Education in terms of them knowing that as youth, they also have contributions to make to generating jobs, creating jobs for themselves, to empower themselves. The youth don't have, those who have the opportunity to go to university, do not have to just get a piece of paper and then go look for a, a job. Governments cannot give everybody a job. Nowhere in the world where a, a government is able to give all the youth jobs. So they will be presenting on what, on what opportunities their education gives them in terms of how they can build empires, how they can build businesses. But of course, there are also going to be um, some solutions proposed as to how African education can change to sensitize African students. There's nothing wrong in having a good practical experience and a good theoretical background. So that makes you a stronger student. It makes you a stronger worker. It makes you a stronger job creator because you have the basics on both sides, both in the practice and the theory. So we are looking at how can we magnify that kind of education so that when you have that kind of education, you have confidence that you can go out there and do things. Well, you talk about diversity and one of the sectors that is prominent today in Uganda is the mineral sector and the petroleum sector. Yeah. As an institute in the International University of East Africa, mm -hmm. how are you uh, helping the young people to equip themselves with skills that are going to enable them to compete in today's economy? And I'm happy to inform you that we have been approved by the National Council for Higher Education, our regulators, to run a uh, mining program. So in line with our vision and our philosophy of theory and practice, we are starting the mining school. And in business, have an innovators hub. So, and that hub includes, you know, the business um, hub. Um, it includes all the business lab, entrepreneurship lab, which we teach to all our students, regardless of what they're studying. And that entrepreneurship lab sensitizes them to the fact that the country has minerals, the country has oil, the country has agricultural products, the country has so many things that they can innovate on and create the next big thing or go out to Europe or other places 
to tell them, hey, we've, we have this idea, we've developed it. We teach them the proper ways, the proper you know, way of thinking and of developing these things and of going out there and doing things rather than waiting for, um, for a job, which may never come because we produce more students than the market can absorb. So we have a skilling center for the youth who says, ah, book is not my thing, which it's not all of us who are cut out to be scholars. And we all don't have to be scholars. There are so many people who are very skilled in you know, producing things, manufacturing things, and that is one of the things why our innovation center is unique. We don't only bring professors and master's students and, you know, to the lab. We bring anybody who has a solution. Can you fabricate, you know, X? Yes. It doesn't matter whether you have a PhD or no PhD. If you can do the task, we can train you. And we train you to do world standard, you know, welding or whatever. So we are bringing that skilling center as well. We begin to discuss with our students. So those who are theoretical can come up with theory for an integrated East Africa. How do we integrate education? How do we integrate medicine? How do we integrate trade? You know, so those are the kinds of real tools that the youth, you know, need. At present, they go to school, they learn math, they pass, they go, you know, they go look for a job. Applying what they have learned is not part of the academic program. So with this program, we are trying to sensitize them that whatever your interest is, you can be a leader in that area. And you can achieve. And you can achieve. Thank you so much, Professor, for talking to us. Thank a you wonderful very much. conversation Thank and you. a wonderful goal. Thank you. Idris Matusegawa, NTV.